Thank you for those that are joining. We're going to start in about one minute. Okay. Okay, glad you knew. Let's get started. Ladies and gents, um, please make sure a uh, welcome. Firstly, welcome to grade 11, welcome to 2021. I wish we could have met um, at school and not via Zoom. But it's nice because now we can record the lessons and have the lessons for later review as well. Please join the Google Classroom. It's going to be very important for you to join the Google Classroom. If you haven't yet, uh, there's the code for the Google Classroom. Uh, but I did send the link on the WhatsApp groups um, as well for you guys to join the Google Classroom. You're going to be receiving all of your resources via the Google Classroom. So it's going to be very important for you to go on to there. I have loaded lesson one for you guys. My phone on silent. I have loaded lesson one for you guys already. And so you'll see it contains the notes, several videos that you have to watch. It also contains a worksheet that you need to complete. So you must complete the worksheet as well, please. And in future, most of the most of your little five minute tests will also be on here. So in future, very soon, there's going to be little five minute tests on here as well that you're going to have to to complete on the lesson. I will try and put the newest lesson that we are discussing at the top of the page each time. Today's lesson will be on microorganisms. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure you I am sharing the right screen. Yes, okay. Okay, people, so today's lesson will be on uh, microorganisms. Before I start, if you have any questions, please place it in the chat box. Possibly if we have time afterwards, what we'll do is I will then take live questions that you can raise your hand and or just ask. But during the lesson, please place your questions in the chat box. Guys, don't write on my screen. Um, allow me to control the lesson uh, so that we can flow through this lesson and get it done in as minimum time as possible. Okay, so microorganisms, we're talking about viruses, bacteria, and protista. In the next few lessons, we're gonna focus on them. And this is an introductory lesson to them. In the next few lessons, we're gonna go into them in more detail each group. What we do at the beginning of grade 11 is we take, um, we start from the basic organisms and then we work to more complex organisms. We're doing the same here. We're starting the viruses, which is the most basic organism. But as you can see, just because something is basic doesn't mean that it's not important. Um, the virus, the COVID-19 virus is causing havoc around the world. Um, it's, it's bringing economies down. It is changing populations. Um, it's causing many families a lot of grief. So just because it's a simple organism 
doesn't mean that it's not important. It's actually very important. Okay, so you will watch the videos on viruses and bacteria on your own via the Google Classroom. Okay, so bacteria. What role does bacteria play in the ecosystem? Now, to us, for us to go through this lesson a little bit quicker, I'm going to discuss a few things. Um, normally, what we do is this is a class discussion in the class. But if we take a look at bacteria, um, they play important roles in our ecosystems. They control numbers in our ecosystems. They are also um, in relationship. There is a symbiosis between us and bacteria. Um, for example, you've got some intestinal bacteria in your stomach that helps you to digest your food. It also helps fixate nitrogen in the environment. So it plays a very important role in the nitrogen cycle, which is related to you getting enough proteins. Um, and other animals getting in proteins as well as plants. Um, so there's various important roles that bacteria play in an ecosystem. They also are decomposers. They decompose dead organic material so that we don't have dead bodies lying around everywhere. So they get broken, the, the dead material gets broken down. Um, into simpler substances that can be used again. What would happen if bacteria became extinct? Okay, so people, if bacteria became extinct, we, as I said here, you will have dead bodies lying everywhere because there won't be decomposition, okay? But we also won't be able to digest our food because there's no symbiosis of our intestinal bacteria, our E. coli in our stomach. Um, Numbers would be out of control. Population numbers would get out of control. And we wouldn't have any proteins because we're not able to take nitrogen directly from the environment. We need bacteria for that. What is the role of viruses in ecosystems? Okay, they are pathogenic. Pathogenic, that's a very important word meaning that they are pathogens, which means they cause disease. And COVID-19 is a typical example of that currently at the moment. Um, and it, it plays a, a role in controlling the numbers of the dominant host species by infecting them and causing them to die. Now, unfortunately for us, on Earth, we are the dominant host species of COVID-19. And COVID-19 is controlling our numbers at the moment. It's very sad for us because it affects us directly. But the other sad part is that if it wasn't for the high population density that we have, especially in places like China and India, we wouldn't have this problem because, and it's, that's what the viruses are doing in the ecosystem of the world, is they're controlling human numbers because there's too many of us in too little space. And so, as you know, one of the things that we try to do with COVID-19 to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is we promote social distancing because if we're not close to one another, not close to one another, then um, diseases don't spread as easily like COVID-19. And so then we can try and eliminate the spread of the virus. In marine ecosystems, the organisms that they kill provide nutrients for bacteria in deeper parts of the ocean. Okay, so we, we started talking about bacteria and um, their role in the ecosystem. So here's a few examples. Over, say, over there, we can see the decomposition of that apple through bacteria. 
Uh, there's also some bacteria that can photosynthesize and provide oxygen to us, as well as create sugars and um, through chemical reactions. I see there's some questions in the chat box. Let's check quickly. Okay, guys, don't be rude. Okay, um, I see the way, and I, I, I'm sorry if you can't hear me. It might be because of a slow internet connection, but watch the way you're talking. That is not a nice way to put it. Okay, I'm not this guy. I'm your educator. Okay. Um, can I just, yeah, um, maybe you can even comment in the box. Um, is there anybody else that can't hear me properly? Okay, I'm not seeing any comments coming through. Um, okay, so I see some people can't hear properly. I see some can. I'll try to speak more loudly, okay? Uh, but it might be because of a slow internet connection on your side. So just take your internet connection as well before you go into a, a next Zoom lesson as well. I just want to quickly double check on um, our participants in the group. Um, there's nobody else with a video on, so that shouldn't be a problem in terms of internet speeds. Okay. So guys, sometimes Zooms unfortunately can have a lag, and but I will be recording this lesson and I'll listen to it quickly afterwards before I send it so that you can come back and you can maybe listen to the lesson. Okay, okay then from there, um, we said good decomposition and breaking down of dead organic material and I returned the nutrients to the ecosystem and then this helps keep dead organisms and waste matter from building up. And they also play an important role, as I said to you, in the nitrogen cycle, which we'll discuss later in the section of work. Okay, so here's the nitrogen cycle. Um, there's some nice videos on the nitrogen cycle as well on the Google Classroom that you can go and watch. People, if we take a look at atmospheric nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen cannot be absorbed in our bodies. Uh, we breathe in 79% nitrogen, we breathe out 79% nitrogen. And so that means that, um, okay, I see quite a few people can't hear me. I wonder what is the issue. Okay, I will send the recording afterwards. So if you can't hear now and you have a problem, log off. I'll listen to the recording afterwards and see if um, I see what the sound is like and then send this lesson via Google Classroom to you guys. Okay. Okay, so people. How do we then get nitrogen in our bodies? Because we need nitrogen in our bodies to build proteins. We get it through nitrogen fixing bacteria, which absorbs the nitrogen from the, from the atmosphere and then gives it to certain plants like legume plants, legume plants. If we take a look at legume plants, um, like peanuts and beans, they have a lot of proteins inside them. And so we can eat those plants and get the nitrogen, the proteins containing nitrogen from them. Okay, so also another thing that happens is uh, we can get nitrogen fixing bacteria that can turn the, that into ammonia and then into nitrites and into nitrates. And those nitrates can then help us to also get nitrogen into plants, get nitrogen into their diets. And so if they get nitrogen built into them, we can eat the plants and get the nitrogen in us. On the other hand, we also decompose a lot of the nitrates and um, 
by doing that, we return some of the nitrogen into the system that we can absorb. Guys, you need, you need to draw the nitrogen cycle for today's lesson, but you're not making all these little pretty drawings around the cycle. You're only drawing the cycle. Okay, so plants absorb nitrogen in the form of nitrates from the soil. They use nitrate to make plant proteins. When animals and plants die, the nitrogen contained in their proteins is acted upon by decomposers, including bacteria, and the nitrogen can be converted to ammonia, which then can be converted to nitrites and then converted to nitrates. Okay, so plants absorb nitrogen in the form of nitrates and then convert them. And what they do is they fix it into their proteins before we eat it and convert it to animal proteins. We talked about legume plants like beans and peanuts that is in a close relationship with, um, with the, some um, bacteria that can directly take nitrogen from them. It's a symbiotic relationship between them. These notes are on my Google Classroom. Okay, so E. coli. Okay, so there is a worksheet on E. coli that you have to complete. So please, um, it's on the Google Classroom under lesson one, please complete the E. coli worksheet. And then we need to consider with E. coli. Is E. coli, um, is it beneficial to us? Is it mutualistic? Is it parasitic? Because unfortunately it is, what you'll see is that E. coli or Escherichia coli is a bacteria that is beneficial to us it helps us to digest our foods, especially proteins, but, but there's a problem. It can also make us sick. It can also be pathogenic. And so if we get E. coli in our bodies in the wrong places, then unfortunately, it's also gonna make us sick. Okay, so protista. Protista are the simplest um, after bacteria, the simplest eukaryotic, and we'll discuss that later, that word eukaryotic cells. And protists are examples of protists are things like algae, diatoms, and they're very important in aquatic environments. They produce food, they photosynthetic, so they produce um, sugars and oxygen for us. And then um, actually, if you take a look at some algae, they produce most of our oxygen in our atmosphere, not land plants, but algae. Okay, so they can also be saprophytic. Sapro means dead, phytic means feed, feed on the dead. So that means that they are decomposers and they help decompose organic material. Also, protista can be pathogenic. They can be pathogens and cause diseases like malaria. Um, and we're gonna discuss malaria in more detail in later lessons. Okay, so we also use protista economically. We pre uh, use protista like yeast uh, because it can convert sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide. And so it's important in processes like baking of bread as well as in the making of alcohol. Okay. So that is today's lesson. Let's just recap very quickly um, on what you need to do before I go to the chat box and check. Please download the lesson one materials. There's a worksheet and there's notes as well as other videos that you need to watch. Please complete the worksheet and draw the nitrogen cycle. Thank you. Um, guys, let's check the chat, chat box quickly. Okay, 
I see we still had some problems with the sound. It's fine. Um, I will listen to the sound of the recorded lesson in a moment and post that on YouTube. And then I'm going to put the link up into the on the Google Classroom under lesson one for you guys to get. Thank you. Uh, I will again have a lesson tomorrow and I'll see if I can sort out the internet speed and sound on my side as well. Thank you. Okay, um, I am on the Google Classroom. I say you say it can't open. I see somebody also said yesterday it can't open. And um, I'm physically opening it up now. There, there's the lesson. There's the one worksheet. There's the other worksheet that you need, the resources for the worksheet. There is the notes. So it's opening. And there's the video. And the video is playing. So I don't know why you guys aren't able to open. I'm opening it from my side. Um, so just check if it's not maybe a setting on your side as well. Thank you. 